peace. And we hear what we need to hear as we are open from the top. I am so grateful for this healing. And I am so grateful for everyone here, for this community, for these volunteers. As we take a deep breath in, we know this is already manifested. The love, light, joy, humor, peace, grace, and ease is all flowing, is already manifested. And so it is. And together we say, Amen. 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 Thank you. Right now, we'll just all take that deep breath in and get centered. Grab our cup of coffee if we need to and um, Jim will mute us we'll do that we we'll work about probably about another minute or so Oh, beautiful. Where are you? Okay, I'm going to have to get start get, getting started here with the service. So I'm going to have to mute you all. And uh, so uh, we'll go from there. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Jim. Mm. Such a beautiful Sunday morning, so glad you're here. And those at home or wherever you may be watching us on Facebook Live or Zoom, so glad to have you with us as well. We're going to start our service right now by singing our opening chant, The Light of God. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us, and the presence of God watches over us. The light of God surrounds us, the love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us, and the presence of God watches over us. The light of God surrounds us, the love of God enfolds us. God protects us, and the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. We're delighted you've joined us in person or via Facebook Live <coughs> and Zoom. For those who are here in person, 
<coughs> Excuse me. Please be sure to silence your cell phones. Thank you. <coughs> and now let us join in prayer. <coughs> Remembering that where two or three are gathered together, love happens. I settle into that place where I know there is only one God, one creator, creator of all life, expressing itself through all it has created. It expresses through me. It is all of me. No part of me is separated from it. I'm safe in it. I am protected in it. No matter the chaos that expresses around me, I keep my mind stayed on God knowing his or her love embraces me always. I am an eternal spirit, having an experience in time. I choose to love those around me and find joy in every moment. How fortunate are we to know the truth of our lives. I am so grateful for the sweetness of the music, the groundedness of this sanctuary and the dedication of our ministers, and today for our dear Dr. Mark bringing us even more light. I release my word into the law of mind action, knowing it holds my peace of mind. And together we say, Amen. <laughs> Stay. Please rise and join us in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, <coughs> thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power forever. Amen. And now for our congregational song, Make a Joyful Noise. Make a joyful noise. 
Lift your voices to the sky. Make a joyful noise to your source and your supply. Celebrate as one. Grateful for this time we share. Celebrate as one. for the next five minutes. I invite you to close your eyes and silently repeat the mantra, God's the love that I am. If your mind wanders, just bring it back to silently repeating, God is the love that I am. And I'll bring us out of meditation in five minutes.
God loves a lullaby and mother's tears in the dead of night better than a hallelujah sometimes. And God loves a drunkard's cry, a soldier's plea not to let him die better than a hallelujah sometimes. We pour out our misery, God just hears a melody, beautiful the mess we are, the honest cries of breaking hearts, better than a hallelujah. Woman holding on for life, a dying man giving up the fight. Better than a hallelujah sometimes. Tears of shame for what's been done, the silence when the words won't come. Better than a hallelujah sometimes. We pour out our misery, God. Great, Melissa, thank you. All right, good morning. morning. Welcome, it's wonderful to have you here. I'm so happy to be together. So uh, when I was young, uh, I loved all those Bible epics on TV. And uh, I think it was pretty likely that we would watch something and then my brother and I would go out in the yard and try and act it out. And, uh, And this was certainly true of Samson and Delilah that we would think of that scene where Samson is pushing down the temple. And so what this meant for us is we, Saturday afternoon, we just watched the movie. Now we're in the backyard, and we're up against trees, pretending we're going to push down the trees. So one of us would be Samson, and one of us would be the Philistines. So I'm pushing down the trees, and my brother's like, ah, you know, when the temple falls on the people, you know. And then it would be his turn to push down the temple, and I'd be the people falling down. And the, so I loved those stories, and I think they, they really, really made... Um, an impression on me. So as I got older, it made me very, very interested. So I want to tell you a little bit about that story. So this story comes from the book of Judges in the Old Testament. And at the time when this story, what this story is about is the nation was in chaos. (laughs) Go figure, right? (laughs) So Samson is an Israelite warrior and a judge, and he's known for his incredible strength and power. And no one was a match for Samson, and when the spirit, no one was a match for Samson when the Spirit of God was with him. 
right? So from the tr he is from uh, a particular tribe, and he is what is known as a Nazarite. And what this means is that Nazarites don't cut their hair, which is symbolic of their dedication to God. They also do not drink alcohol, and they can't be anywhere near a corpse, okay? So I don't understand all of that, but, you know, they were supposed to be kept very pure uh, because at the time of their birth, they were dedicated to God, okay? And so the Philistines are the enemy of the Israelites. And so they plot with this beautiful woman, Delilah, who is a Philistine, to find out the secret of Samson's strength. And so the Philistines, uh, each of these Philistine princes say that they will give her each, they will each give her a thousand shekels if she will betray Samson and find out his great secret. So Delilah starts to get cozy with Samson and says, you know, you've got to tell me your secret. You know, come on, it's me. You can trust me, right? And so Samson's like, oh, okay, okay. Well, all right, if, if you were to tie me up with seven fresh bowstrings that have never been dried out, I will be as weak as any man. And eventually Samson falls asleep and Delilah ties him up with the seven bowstrings, right? And then she says, the Philistines are upon us. And Samson jumps up and he breaks out of those. And so clearly that was not the key, uh, what was making him be so strong. Now, this is not a healthy relationship, I'm here to say. <laughs> Samson never says, wow, you lied to me, <laughs> right? I mean, you, you were trying to get information out of me. You didn't say that. And what Delilah says, which is why I think this is such an unhealthy relationship, she says, you lied to me. You don't love me. You made me look foolish in front of all the Philistines. Not, I almost got you killed, but you made me look foolish, right? So she says, you know, you've got to tell me. If you really, if you really love me, you'll tell me. Right? And so he says, well, all right, if you tie me with new ropes that have never been used. He falls asleep. She ties him up. And she cries, the Philistines are coming, right? And Samson breaks free again. Oh, you lied to me. I can't believe you lied to me. I thought you loved me. You made me look so foolish when the Philistines got here. Fine. Okay, okay. If Samson's hair was braided, and he says, you know, if, if you get the seven braids of my hair into the loom, then I will, I will be powerless, right? So Samson goes to sleep. She gets his hair into the loom, blah, blah, blah. The Philistines are upon us, and once again, Samson breaks free. So finally, finally, it comes, he says, he tells her the truth. He says, all right, if, you, if my head were shaved, my strength would leave, and I would become as weak as any man. And so this is where Delilah actually succeeds in betraying Samson. Delilah has his head shaved while he sleeps. And now he only has the strength of one man. And so what the Philistines do to him first is they blind him, right? And it says in the scriptures that the Lord left him. And that, why? Why would the Lord him? Because he left God. Now, God never actually leaves us, but more, more to be revealed in just a moment. And Samson is made a slave by the Philistines. Wow, this, this, is such, this is a great story. This is a really exciting story. This is as good as any crime drama. I'm t I love it, you know? <laughs> And it says um, that over time, his hair started to grow back. Mm -hmm. And so the Philistines lead him out into the temple where thousands of Philistines are gathered. And you know, the way the temples were created then, they had these big flat roofs so people could be up on the roof and look down at the spectacle below. Mm -hmm. And so they bring him out there and he says to the person leading him, he says, oh, bring me to the pillars so I can lean on the pillars, right? And so the guy clearly falls for that and brings Samson over to a pillar. And he, Samson prays, God, give me strength one more time so I can punish my enemies, basically is what he says. And while he's there and the people are jeering at him and making fun of him and stuff like that, he does one of these, you know, he pushes on the pillars and these are the main pillars of the temple, and all of those roofs with thousands of people start coming down. Okay, so, it's interesting to me that Samson kept trusting Delilah and would tell her, and she would betray him again and again and again. 
So that's just interesting. I think that that speaks to Samson's humanity, right? That's human consciousness, right? And I say, okay, well, you know, Samson, shame on you for your stupidity there. But, but that's not what the story is about. Samson betrays himself in God is what's really taking place here. Remember, when Samson was born, he was dedicated to God from birth as a Nazarite. Never cut your hair, no alcohol, don't hang out with corpses. Right? <laughs> but Samson, Samson is arrogant and prideful because he's stronger than anybody, right? And he forgets that God is the power. See, this is the rub. Samson forgets that God's the power. The strength was actually not in Samson's hair, but it was in the vow that he made to God and the divine instructions that were given to him. So this is, this is incredible to me. I think this is just so, so amazing. So you know how the story ends is that Samson and Delilah and all the Philistines, it, it does not end well for. And so I think, well, what does this call to mind today? Well, for me, I look at this and I think, ah, of all the ways Delilah and Samson both exist within us. That's what we would teach in the science of mind because all the characters, Old Testament or new, they all exist within us and they're showing us something about our spiritual journey. So the thing that really struck me this time was that the nation was in chaos. You know, I mean, I've read this story a hundred times over the years and I'd never got that part that the nation was in chaos. And that, I saw that and I went, oh, I better pay a little more attention to this. What do I need to know? What can I possibly learn from this? And so I think within each of us, there is Samson and there is Delilah. There is something that is dedicated to God, that when we are dedicated to that spirit of God within us, dedicated to the truth within us, we are incredibly powerful. We are incredibly strong. We can accomplish great, great things. And there is something within us that also betrays us. No, I don't know about you, but I think that in the course of a long lifetime, we experience betrayal on the outside, we experience betrayal on the inside. It seems to me that it is one of the harder lessons on the spiritual journey. You say, oh, well, you know, I, well, I don't, I'm just betrayal. I'm not, I wouldn't betray myself. And it's like, you know, have you ever known that something was not in your best interest and you shouldn't eat it? And then you do, you just betrayed yourself, okay? So there, we can just put that discussion on the side. We all betray ourselves, right? Again and again and again. So again, the thing I think that is so important about this was the strength was not in the hair, right? And I, and I had always <laughs> believed that that was the case. But what I, my understanding now, though, really, what I get from the story now is it's not about Samson's hair. It was in the vow he made to God, in his connection, in his awareness of a connection that God within me is the power. And this is what I think is very important for us to be aware of right now today. I think that um, like Delilah, um, our country is a little greedy for the shekels. You know? And so where the shekels are is what often guides people's decisions. You know, what, am I going to make money on that? How am I going to make money on that? How is this going to profit me? How is this going to benefit me? which I think in a country as big as ours is actually short-sighted because I think we're forgetting rule number one in metaphysics and mysticism is that we are all one. We are all connected. And what we do to any one part affects the whole part, right? I mean, we all know this. We're, we're not, you know, unintelligent people. We know this, and yet we have seen again and again we keep making choices that are not in the best interest of like we used to say in the 60s, children, flowers, and other living things. You know, they're just not necessarily in our best interest. So this week, I was looking at, um, I'm, like everybody, I'm really troubled by the violence that is existing and seems to be growing in America. Um, and, you know, and it just sort of sits in my stomach as like this, ugh, this ache of sadness and not knowing what to do and and I prayed and I feel like I'm praying every day and I don't actually see it getting better, but I know sometimes it takes a long time when you pray before you see the results. And so I thought, hmm, along these lines, what I think would be helpful for us is if we together, together, because I believe everybody's doing what they know how to do in consciousness on their own, but part of the value in coming together as a spiritual community is that ideas are strengthened when they're shared. And we know that. Everybody understands that. So we have a collective agreement here. And I think our agreement here is around love, and it's around God, and it's around being peaceful, and all that stuff. So I looked up 
this week all of the places and I thought, just let me look at the month of June. I just want to see the month of June. And I was overwhelmed by the number of incidences. I mean, I, would, I thought there were probably about half as many as I actually found. And that was really, really disturbing. So this is never about other people, right? It's always about bringing it back to my own consciousness. Where am I, Samson? Where am I, Delilah? Where am I, a nation in chaos? You know? And so I thought one of the good things we could do is recognizing, again, that an idea that is shared is more powerful, is that um, I would like to take us in to do a little piece of inner work this morning that I believe will be really helpful for us and helpful for our country. So I'm going to ask you to just close your eyes and turn your attention inward. We'll start a little early with this today. And so bring your awareness to your breathing. Just notice that you're breathing in and notice you're breathing out. I'm breathing in, I'm breathing out. And with each breath, let the area of your heart become fuller. Let it become richer, let it become deeper. And so I know that in this most holy and sacred moment that God is present here and that each of us, like Samson, we have an agreement with God that we are dedicated to that spiritual truth that's everywhere, but most importantly, that truth is within us, and that truth sets us free. So I know for each and every one of us that we are willing, we are open, receptive vessels for God's love in the world. And so with each place that I name, I invite us to send an energy of love and healing and peace the energy of God, as we understand it, to everyone affected in that community. Because our prayer is for all beings to live in peace and harmony, to have their needs met, to know love, to feel a sense of security and well-being. And so know with me that in each of these places, there are families, there are people just like you, families just like yours, who are affected. Okay. Tacoma, Washington, Brooklyn, New York, Houston, Texas, Minneapolis, Minnesota, Hopewell, Virginia, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Burleson, Texas, Chicago, Illinois, Manhattan, New York, Staten Island, New York, Waterloo, South Carolina, Detroit, Michigan, Washington, D.C. Remember, in each of these places, there are people just like you and me. Grand Rapids, Michigan, San Antonio, Texas, Pensacola, Florida, Baltimore, Maryland, Chicago, Illinois, Oakland, California, Denmark, South Carolina, Los Angeles, California, Roseville, Michigan, Gary, Indiana, Indianapolis, Indiana, New Orleans, Louisiana, Denver, Colorado, Detroit, Michigan. We're not done. We're only halfway. This is this month in America. Shootings, incidences of violence. Chicago, Illinois. Louisville, Kentucky. Atlanta, Georgia. Antioch, Tennessee. Decatur, Georgia. Smithsburg, Maryland. Yuma, Arizona. Portsmouth, Virginia. Chicago, Illinois, Baltimore, Maryland, Chicago, Illinois, Grand Rapids, Michigan, Chattanooga, Tennessee, Mesa, Arizona, Andrews, South Carolina, Saginaw, Michigan, Somerton, South Carolina, Macon, Georgia, El Paso, Texas, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 
Phoenix, Arizona, Hempstead, New York, Omaha, Nebraska, Chester, Virginia, Centerville, Texas, and Tulsa, Oklahoma, all in less than a month. And so I pray this morning, Heavenly Father, Holy Mother, spirit of love within the heart and mind of each and every person, we are willing to be changed in the deepest possible way so that what separates us actually is turned into what brings us together, that where there is a belief that we are different, I know that we are one in the spirit of God, that we are one human family, and that the tendency to violence does not exist in the infinite mind of God. So I claim that there is peace within our hearts, within our minds, within our emotions, within our physical bodies. So for the next moment, be that peace. Just be the peace that passes all human understanding. Like Jesus said, my peace I give you, my peace I leave you. And so we open ourselves this morning to the presence of the infinite spirit and to the wisdom and knowledge of what within each of us individually needs to be changed, needs to be brought up to the light for healing and completion and release so that we might live in a more peaceful, loving, gentle, compassionate world. And so today we include all our family members and friends, parents and children, everybody we hold near and dear. And as we see them in our mind's eye, we know the truth of God's loving, healing presence right where they are. And as we have spoken the word for all of these places in America that in the last month have experienced such incredible violence, I claim that at the core of our being, there is a peace that is the very peace of God. There is a love that goes beyond all belief in separation. And there is a unity that I know our country and our world is based on. So we bless our church. We bless all churches everywhere. We bless synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams. And I know that as we go forward, we do not betray ourselves in any way. And we do not betray that commitment we have made to the God of our being that living, loving spirit that's everywhere and within us, and I know this day sets us free. So with an open and a gracious and a full heart, I say thank you, God, for all of us together. Thank you for this truth. Thank you for this incredible place that we live that has blessed us so much. May it continue to do so and bless everyone else as well. I know we are guided, we are directed, and we are changed at the deepest level. So with a full heart, I release this word into God's perfect law. And so it is. Together we all say, Amen. All right. We'll sing. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. I invite you to hold your gift over your heart and we'll say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much.
Lewis. Where can we get your music? Where can we purchase it? <laughs> iTunes. <laughs> Melissa Lewis, iTunes. And thank you, Sam and Karen. <clears throat> if this is your first time at our church, we're delighted that you are here. Please stop by the welcome table on the patio to pick up a packet of information just for you. We make it easy for you to make donations to our church. The text to give number is inside your program and a QR code is on the back. Or go to nhcrs.org slash give. Prayer with a practitioner is available after service in person and on Zoom. Wednesday evening service with Reverend Sidney Steen begins at 7 o'clock. Meditation begins at 6.50. Join Reverend Sidney this week as she shares on the topic, God in Drag. That should be fun. Japan trip with Dr. Mark, October 2022. 
Join Dr. Mark for the spiritual adventure of a lifetime. For details and sign up, visit our website today. Pray like you've never prayed before. Rock Your Word is Reverend Sidney's brand new six-week How to Pray class. Join Reverend Sidney starting June 28th for this trans transformational class where you'll learn affirmative, powerful, and effective prayer. Sign up on our website today. Cost is $175. Required text is available in the bookstore or online. Grief support. This group, facilitated by practitioner Carol Winokur, meets today at 1 p.m. on Zoom. Save the date, July the 3rd. We're celebrate, celebrating the holiday weekend with a free barbecue after the 1130 service. Join us for delicious food, fellowship, and music by Mary Highland and Gilbert Acuna. We'll also be having a used book sale that day. So it's double. The 3rd and the 10th. So if you miss the book sale on the 3rd, come for the 10th. You won't want to miss it. I've gotten a lot of really good books there. Shay Ernest, French dinner. Join Dr. Mark for a fabulous French dinner, decadent desserts, and wonderful entertainment. Friday, July 15th at 7 p.m. on the church patio. Tickets are on sale now on the patio and online for $40 each. You can hardly get a good meal for $40. <laughs> and this one is mwah. Zoom virtual patio before and after Sunday and Wednesday services. Zoom meditation every morning, Monday through Saturday from 7.55 until 8.15 p.m. Visit our website nhcrs.org to obtain Zoom links and more information about all our events and to sign up for weekly e-blasts and monthly newsletter. So please stand and join in the peace song. <laughs> So please repeat after me. I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I am living love. Thank you. Amen.
How is everybody this morning? Um, Jim, can you mute the sanctuary? 